Hello, we are here with our lovely knot samplers in week 17. Um, and as you can see, mine is still looking a little bit empty. I've got my Danish knots there that I did the other week. I've added some French knots as well, but I haven't quite finished the middle because, you know, I was watching Line of Duty, I think, at the time. <laughs> and anyway, I've started my uh, bullion knots here. Um, and so I'm just going to do a few more of those in that circle for you now. So yours might look a bit like mine, you might not have quite as got as far, you might have been stitching every week, it honestly doesn't matter wherever you're at. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I was sharing a project video with this with you this week, um, having not done so the past couple of weeks with me moving into my studio, which is exciting. I'm here now, recording now. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm blathering on. Let's do these knots. Basically, if you're right-handed, start on the right. If you're left-handed, start on the left. Um, whoops, I've gone all the way through there. Don't do that. Too busy talking and thinking about what I should be doing and chatting about my studio. Anyway, if you're right-handed like me, start on the right. Left-handed, start on the left. And then make the stitch, hold the loop, and then come back through that first hole that you made where your stitch first started. You can pull on that thread to make the loop a little bit bigger if you want. Um, these are some of the tips that I've learned along the way since recording um, the original stitch tutorial. So if you feel like you've gone too far or you make that first stitch like I did, you can easily go back a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to wrap 10 times around here and then just push that down really gently. That you can actually manipulate it a little bit more once you've got the hang of it, you can kind of manipulate those threads a bit more. Um, and I've done my usual trick of trying to make my hands look nice by putting hand cream on and forgetting that actually that isn't helpful for sewing, is it? I mean, hopefully, when I've stopped decorating, <laughs> it'll be a bit nicer. So you can see that I've just pulled that through, and then that's what it looks like it's kind of caught on that thread. There we go. So I'm going to keep the thread with a needle attached nice and tight so I can pull that and then just use my finger and my thumb to pull those along. Um, I prefer to do it with uh, my thumb really, sometimes I get my needle in but having done a few more of them now I think that that's a little bit better. Oh, I've just gone slightly off camera here, just getting used to the new setup, apologies for that. Basically you tie the end in with a little stitch there. So that's looking nice. I like them in this lovely lime colour. Let's do another one. So coming up, coming back through. I think the other thing to say about these is don't make them too long. You need to keep them nice and short just so they're quite manageable really. Um, and again, once you've done a few, you'll kind of get an idea of um, roughly um, what is manageable for you. Um, I reckon mine aren't, they're not even a centimetre long, um, maybe sort of seven or eight millimetres if you want to be super precise, but you know, just have a little play around. You can draw the lines on if you prefer, I would use an er erasable pen or something like that, something that's going to disappear nice and easily because you don't want to be able to see it, but if you find that helpful then do that, but try and keep them nice and small. I've obviously gone a little bit too tight on this here, but there we go, with a little wiggle get it done. Now if you can see that thread that's supposed to catch the end it's at the wrong end because I had to do a little bit of wiggling so I'm just going to use my needle to get it to the right end. We're going to keep the thread that I'm holding between my finger and my thumb nice and tight and that'll enable me to just wiggle that about a bit and get that in the right place. There we go. So if that happens to you that's fine. That's another troubleshooting tip. Um, you can just easily move that along. So let's just secure that end in position there. There we go. So that's my lovely bullion knots. That's what they look like on the back. I quite like the back. <laughs> it's always nice to see what's gone into it, isn't it? So um, this week I'm gonna finish that circle with more bullion knots in the same color. And then I'm going to go back and do some of the other stitches that I've missed out. So I've missed out knot stitch and I've missed out the square boss from the previous couple of weeks. So I'm going to add those in and then I'm basically going to fill in the rest of the circles with 
a sort of selection of these knots. So you could do your favourites, you could do one each of the other one. If there's any you want to miss out, you think, I hate those, miss it out. Good luck! Mm -hmm.